This hack tip is brought to you by Full Sail University. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we bring down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morris, and we're checking out more Wireshark this week with TCP streams and objects. While running a packet capture in Wireshark, you may find that the packets are all in one nice long list. It's so very pretty with all sorts of nice colors, and some of them match up with others. An example would be if a user is visiting multiple different websites, then you'll have a whole series of packets dedicated to one site and a whole other series dedicated to another site. They'll both end up in this really, really long list, and it's hard to make makes sense of where each packet is going and which ones depend on which websites. So this is where other things come in handy. If you look down at my computer, they'll both end up in this long list depending on when they're captured, but they correspond with different streams. So it's really hard to tell which websites correspond with which packets. Now, if you want to follow a specific stream of packets, you can right click on the packet and choose this, this thing called follow TCP stream. So if I choose one of these, so I'll choose this weird one, refinery29.com. I don't even know what that is. So I'll right click on that and go to follow UDP stream and it'll show me a nice little listing. So that's a UDP packet. Now I'm gonna go back and let's find a TCP one. There's plenty of TCPs. But I'm gonna go up to the top so we can get the full listing. Let's see, this one looks like a good one. Follow TCP stream and I get this new window. Ooh, it's so very pretty. So this new window is gonna open up and the filter will update in your main window. So if you look up at filter right here, it's gonna say TCP stream EQ105. So that basically means that TCP stream is, well, that's self-explanatory. It's a, t a stream of TCP packets. EQ and then a number will mean that it'll equal associated with the stream followed for your packets. So it's going to equal packet 105, for example, and it's gonna show me the stream from that specific packet. Pretty cool. Okay, so now under the Go menu, you can also move around or use keyboard shortcuts to get to a specific packet in this new stream. So if I go up to Go, I'll notice that I have the options to go back, forward, go to packet, go to corresponding packet, and then a bunch down here. So I can also use keyboard shortcuts for these, Control FN, home to get to the top and to get to the bottom, or I can just use the up and down arrows to choose specific packets. So a little bit more useful than clicking around with your mouse all day, because we know we hate mice, don't we? Now within the new TCP stream menu, and I'll go back over to this, you'll see a listing of information, which doesn't make a lot of sense. It just looks like a bunch of garbled information going on. Now this is gonna be information about the packet stream that you just followed. So this is gonna show you the entire conversation from the very start, wherever you sent your information out, and then whatever you received. So you can also break it down into separate parts as well. You'll notice that up at the top, everything is highlighted in red. So this is the first send out message. And then after that, we have another packet of information. And then scroll down and you'll see other packets included in there as well. Now I'll go back up to the top. It doesn't make a lot of sense though, that's the problem. So you can view this information in a whole bunch of different ways. For example, I can see it in the raw data. So this is just the raw data that I'm seeing now. I can change this also to C arrays. So you can see all the separate C arrays. Hex dump, I'm sure you guys are familiar with hexes. E, B, C, D, I, C. I'll get back to that one in a second. And ASCII. Of course, we all know what ASCII is. So this second to last one, this E, B, C, D, I, C. It sounds kind of weird, but it stands for Extended Binary Coded Decimal Interchange Code. It's an 8-bit character encoding used mainly on IBM mainframe and IBM mid-range computer operating systems. Just a little FYI about what the heck that is. Now, I'm going to get back into this in just a second, but first, let's take a quick break to thank our sponsor. As you know, virtually every industry relies on software technology. Full Sail University, located in Winter Park, Florida, offers bachelor degree programs that address the need for skilled tech professionals through curriculum that blends code and theory with real world experience. Offered on campus, the Software Development Bachelor's Degree program teaches programming fundamentals through project-based coursework, allowing students to graduate with multiple completed software products. 
The Mobile Development Bachelor's degree offered on campus and online teaches students how to develop apps and utilities through courses that cover both iOS and Android development. And the Web Design and Development Bachelor's degree program, also available on campus and online, teaches front-end design, back-end development, along with coding formats, programming languages, and so much more. All students have hands-on access to technology from day one. They receive a laptop computer and an institutional discount, along with relevant software and tools. To learn more about Full Sail's web and technology programs, visit fullsail.com edu slash hack tip. We are back and now it's time for something called decodes. If you want to right click on any of your different packets down here, you'll see a little message down at the bottom that says decode as. When you click on that, you get a nice little new window. So this is going to allow you to decode any packet into another format. So if you have a packet on the transport layer, you can decode that as any user specified protocol. Same with network and link. So if I look down here, you'll first see transport layer. If I go down under here, I can choose the UDP port, so I can either choose the one that goes out, the source, the destination, or both, and then I can choose how I want to decode that information. And I have lots and lots, in fact, probably over a hundred different options down here. Quake, haha, <laughs> Pulse, PTP, and so on and so forth. Same with network and link. So under network, I'm gonna have a bunch of options for the protocol, the IP protocol 17, and under link, so it's gonna say ether type. So the link is going to also give me a bunch of different options to decode. Now you're gonna notice that all of these different layers, the transport network and link layer, are all familiar with the OSI model layers. So you'll notice a few little similarities there. Another really cool option I wanted to share is the HTTP object list. I'm gonna close the decode options and go over to File, Export Objects, go to HTTP. There we go. Okay, so this is going to give me a listing of all the different HTTP packets that I got during my packet capture, and then I can save them for later use. So if I wanted to click on one of these, let's see, we'll do su7.png. I'm assuming this comes from the Mary Sue, a website that I frequent quite often. So I can click on that, hit save as, save as, go down to my desktop where I like to save everything and hit save. Now if I go to my desktop, there it is. There is the little PNG image straight from the packet itself. It's kind of cool, you can actually see relevant information from your packets that you can specifically download straight from Wireshark. I like being able to do things like that. So cool. Now you'll see the actual image saved wherever you want to put it. Now let me know what you think, of course. You can send me a comment below or you can email us over at tips at hack5.org. I'll be back next week with some more Wireshark tutorials, but first check out our sister show Hack5 for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there reminding you to trust your technolist. <laughs>